All right, out in the field today. Um, my last video, which I filmed yesterday, I played around in Mills Park. I played pretty well, but form is still pretty jacked up. So um, I'm gonna put in some field work today. I'll kind of talk through what I'm doing, but I'm gonna start off with some warm ups, and then I've kind of got some real specific things I'm gonna work on with each shot. And uh, I'll go through those as they come up. So let's get started. Start off, I'm just gonna do 10 warm up throws, just pretty casual backhand, make sure everything's loose. First throw goes 100 feet, and I always just, I'm like, man, I feel like I throw farther than that. Not on the first throw, though. Throw on some zones first, then I'll throw some straighter discs. And only got eight discs here, so we have eight warm ups. Straight flyer. Gonna try to work some hyzers in too. Two more. I am throwing pretty much straight into a headwind too, so it's probably not gonna help my distance a lot. All right, there's eight. Go pick them up. All right, to keep things moving here, I think I'm gonna sit with stick with the uh, eight discs per round. I don't know if I'm gonna edit out me picking them up or if I just speed it up really quick. Mainly just because I don't know how to do that, but if I figure out how to do that, that's what I'll do. But all right, so next, um, I always throw mid-ranges and putters to start with in my warm-ups, but I'm gonna throw mostly drivers now. I'll keep a couple mid-ranges in there just because I think they're good to practice. But next thing I'm gonna do is I feel like one thing I notice when I watch film myself throwing backhands, especially when I'm trying to go for distance, is that I always get the nose angle up, um, which just means that when I release it, I'm tilting the disc up ever so slightly, and the disc is going up in the air, just like how a normal Frisbee would if you were to throw it that same way. Um, when I do that, it kind of gets caught by the wind a lot more, it gets a lot more air resistance, and doesn't go as far. So I found a good tip um, to improve the nose angle that I'm releasing on and it's really about the grip which was surprising so um, basically the tips that I do is just to hold the disc in your offhand about where you're going to release it so I guess here and then just to make sure that you're pointing the nose down like you want to on the drive and then just grab it and that's the grip so doing that definitely feels a little different than what I typically do so I figured I would just give it a shot see how it works so we're gonna do eight of these this is just me changing nothing else except for making sure I get the nose down I'll start off with mid-ranges again yeah like obviously it's still gonna get up in the air a little bit just because it's a frisbee but you can tell that it really doesn't get more than eight or so feet off the ground. Yeah, that's okay. Two turnovers is a good thing. 
All right, so I've got like five more drills. I'm just gonna keep using these same discs. Um, that was step one, which was nose down. And the goal is that with each additional step, we're gonna try to keep doing things we did in the previous step. So I've got that grip for the nose down. I'm gonna keep doing that for every drill after this. Um, the next one is going to be just moving really slowly on my drives. Um, just a general tip that I have seen, tried to use, and heard a bunch of other people tell it to me is to try to slow down your feet when you're throwing. Um, just the idea being that it's really hard to make changes to your form if you're running. So um, the idea here is I think my typical run-up pace is about this. And so instead I'm going to be basically walking like this. Um, so we're going to do that with the nose down and do eight more shots. Let's make sure I'm still recording. Yep. Cool. All right. Eight more. Two. All right, let's go get them. All right, we're two steps in. Got slow run up and the nose angle. And now I'm going to work on something that I've noticed specifically in my shots, which is something I've tried to correct, but I haven't done a very good job of it is moving my arm in a straight line. Um, still going. Okay. So in my comfortable form, generally when I'm throwing, I bring the disc down and then I bring it up to go through. And I'm losing at least a little bit of speed and smoothness in that bringing it up motion. So the goal is to keep it high and leave it high straight back and then go forward. And we're gonna do that with the grip for the nose down and the slow run up. I just want to be curious to walk back because it feels like I'm bringing it up and across or that I'm not bringing it up and across but I bet I still am a little bit doing that all right so I kind of realized something in my motion that time um, I do have a problem with not moving the disc in a straight line on my shots and my thought process was that I'm releasing it up here so if I just keep the disc up here the whole time then I'm forced to keep it on a straight line and I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. I know there are a lot of people that throw like that, but it doesn't really feel super comfortable to me. And so the key is really just that it moves in a straight line. And so if it's more comfortable for me to bring it down, as long as I can move it in a straight line here and not do this, then it should be fine. Um, I'm gonna try to keep things moving here. So film me trying that again but I'll just kind of be mindful of that and the next drill um, all right so the next one is one is a tip that I saw from a video with Gannon Burr I don't know if anybody watching this actually knows who that is he's a pro disc golfer he's pretty young I think he's like 17 um, but he said that for one that most of your power comes through the upper body kind of like I said earlier if I keep that clip in or not but um, that really the key is driving with your shoulders. I think that a lot of people, myself included, think that 
once you reach back and you get to here, it's about pulling your arm through as fast as possible. And he says that that's completely wrong and that it's actually about driving your shoulders forward and your arm is just kind of forced to follow. So we're going to keep doing the nose angle, keep the slow run up, try to make a straight line, but then also focus on not pulling my arm through and driving with my shoulders. Um, this is something that I think is going to feel really unnatural right now. So I'm not expecting drives to go far. I just kind of want to try it, see how it feels. <laughs> so mm. try to practice it once. <sighs> Try to keep my arm loose. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. First impression. Um, definitely wasn't an immediate fix. I think it's a good tip. I think I'm just not really fully implementing it. I felt like I was staying loose, but I'm sure that I'm still tense. So, oh well, we'll just keep going. Um, this is going to be the last one for backhand. I'm going to move on to forehand after. Uh, let's double check, make sure we're still recording good stuff um, so the last tip is going to be another tip from the Gannon Burr video and in that one what he said is that he sees a lot of amateurs which I like to think that I'm a little better than an amateur but a lot of people struggling to get a ton of distance um, tend to keep their arms straighter when they're throwing I think that I probably do that as well Um, like it's not super close to my body and so the the negative side of that is that the closer the disc is to your body the more of a whipping action there will be afterwards whereas if your arm's really straight there's no whip so i think in my natural motion i kind of bring the disc out here to throw um maybe the camera says otherwise but i feel like that's pretty close and so on this one i'm going to try to do everything i've been doing before nose angle straight line staying loose and trying to drive with my shoulders but then also the line that I want the disc to take is going to be here and we're going to see how that goes um, this will be the last one so try to make it eight good ones Hold it, hold it. Ah. All right, I'm gonna range find of these just because I'm curious. Um, I think that power pocket, the staying loose and keeping it tight, 
is really going to be the biggest biggest change um, not just in like how it feels but then also once I kind of get it down the distance that I'll be able to add with it so that's something that I'll definitely keep working on that's probably something I'll come out here and just devote a whole session to is just working on that um, I was thinking as I was walking back here I think most of the people that watch these videos are not avid disc golfers um, so I don't know if people just mute me if it just sounds like I'm kind of talking gibberish the whole time um, maybe people aren't interested at all but let me know if making a video that kind of explains disc golf a bit more and just kind of explain some of the stuff that I'm talking about generally in my videos if that would be entertaining or helpful because um, that wouldn't be too difficult to make um, if you don't care at all don't say anything and I won't make one so sounds good let's move on to forehands now all right we're moving on to forehands um, if you watched my last video at Mill Creek you probably heard me mention a couple times that my forehands sucked and I needed to work on them. Um, that was definitely evident in the last tournament I played. So I'm going to do a few drills with that right now. My focus is still really dialing in my backhand, but forehands are obviously important. So I really just need to get back to how I was throwing them before. Um, so to start off, I'm just going to throw a few warm-ups. Just got my zones. Um, these are just overstable, so I'm going to throw them out and they're going to go left. Make sure I have a little slack in the mic. Should be good. Probably not. All right, just gonna throw a few out there. Warm up the arm. Whew. First drill I'm doing is okay. So I think I think one thing that I have struggled with is my short forehands are pretty smooth, just because it doesn't require a lot of movement. But once I try to get more power, I start to move my arm a lot more, and then my release gets all effed up. So first drill I'm going to do is going to just take my normal little crow hop and just try to move my arm as little as possible and keep it on a straight line and just flick it out there and we'll see how that goes. Uh, with not a lot of power these are all going to be pretty overstable so they're all going to kind of dump left. But little arm movement, straight line. One more wobble on that one, but not bad. All right, there's the first six. Um, second tip is going to be from a Eagle McMahon video, which you probably don't know who he is, but he is the one of the best players in the world. But he's also the farthest throw hand, forehand thrower in the world. Um, he can throw forehands about 150 feet farther than I can throw a backhand. So his tip is just in your run-up to really focus on keeping your weight on your back foot and rotating. So we'll see how that goes. How's it going? Dylan? Dylan. Yeah. Dylan what? Lloyd. Dylan Lloyd, okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm Jared Robbins. I think we have you them. You look familiar. Yeah. yeah. I definitely recognize the name at least. Yeah. That's about Dylan Lloyd. That sounds familiar. You look familiar. Yeah. Sweet, dude. Nice. Well, <laughs> Super turned over. Same thing. Okay. 
Sorry, I kind of cut myself off there just because I'm awkward about filming in front of people. Um, evidently, it was a guy I've played in a league with before. Um, so the full tip is just to make sure my hips are perpendicular, keep my weight on my back foot, and then don't rotate through until later. I think I just kind of rotate through a little soon. My problem right now is that I'm turning everything over. So right now I need to focus on keeping my wrist flat, even when I'm perpendicular. Um, last tip I'll just talk about, because there's people around the, uh, around the basket now, or uh, not the basket, my cart. Um, last tip, which is another thing that I just kind of noticed from watching film of myself, is that when I throw, my shoulders generally are not level. Um, I generally drop my back shoulder down a lot, and that causes me to hide the release like I did on those. So the last thing I'm going to try to incorporate is just keeping my shoulders level and kind of staying low through the throw. I'm going to bend my knees a little bit more, try to keep everything moving on the same plane. So I got a dog behind me. I might have to wait until they clear out, but once they do, we'll throw the last six. All right, battery's dying on me here, so I'm going to try to rip these out. Shoulders level, stay low. Camera's coming with me here. Yeah, we're working. So I'm walking to get the last six forehands. Um, finished up with the field work for today. I think I made some progress, mostly with backhands, but at least with forehands, I think I know what my next steps are. Um, step one is not throwing it right into the ground. But lesson learned. So got more to work on for next time. Um, I think my battery is about to die. So that's also another incentive for wrapping this video up right now. But I'm gonna head from here over to Roots Disc Golf Course, which is a couple minutes away. Um, it's one I've already filmed one video at. And I'm gonna do a putter only round. So I've got one backup battery and we're gonna hope that it lasts. So until next time.